that everything's working. Cool. Hi guys, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert PTE teachers here at E2 Language. In this live class, we're going to look at an important task that relates both to your writing and your listening. Okay, remember in the PT that some tasks contribute scores to two different skills. This is an important one. It's called summarize spoken text. It's actually a listening task that contributes both to listening and writing. And in some ways, it's probably the most difficult listening or in some ways, maybe the most important listening uh, task there is. So we're going to look at the method. First of all, just let me describe this task to you. So on test day, you'll see something similar to this. You'll see a set of instructions that will tell you whether you're going to hear a lecture or an interview. And the instruction says, write a summary for a fellow student who was not present at the interview or the lecture. We'll get into the ins and outs in a second. You'll also see an audio player where you'll hear the lecture from. Then you have a section where you type your answer and you have a word count of, well, you shouldn't, certainly shouldn't write any more than 70 words. And you'll have a timer and each of these will be timed out of 10 minutes. We'll get to the time management in a second as well. So what happens when you do this task on test day? Well, you have 12 seconds before the lecture or the interview begins to take a deep breath. Get your notebook and pen ready because this task absolutely requires you to take notes and to take good notes, okay? So on test day, they give you what's called an erasable noteboard booklet, something or other thingamajiggy. Basically, it's a plastic sort of notepad and they give you, well, I got given two black erasable texture pen things. Uh, yeah, make sure you get two just in case one runs out because if you, if you don't take notes for some of these tasks, they are virtually impossible. So you just write on it like you normally would and you can rub it out. It's, yeah, it works well. You just have to be careful because if your writing is messy like mine, then you might have trouble reading your own writing. So do yourself a favor and write neatly while you're taking notes or at least neatly enough so that you can read them back again, okay? So that's how the notebook thing works. Then the lecture or the interview begins and it will start to play, right? Goes for about 60 to 90 seconds. Cool, you need to listen and take notes, that's critical. Then you will get eight or nine minutes because you get 10 minutes total time, subtract the lecture or the interview which goes for about a minute or two minutes. So you get about eight or nine minutes left to write a 50 to 70 word summary. And you have to imagine you're writing for a friend so it needs to be clear and nice. And a summary basically means the main points but also some details if you can also capture the details in your notes. Then you simply submit your summary by clicking next, or you can just, if you're still writing at 10 minutes, it will just automatically submit whatever you've written, finished or not. So make sure you finish before that timer ticks down to zero. Cool, then you get one or two more. So in fact, you might get two or three of these on test day. They're, 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 they're tiring, they're, they're big ones, they're big ones. All right, first of all, don't get confused because in the PT, there's summarized spoken text, which I've just described, which is a listening task where you listen to a lecture and write 70 words. There's also summarized written text, similar title, but this one's for writing. And that's where you read the text and write one sentence, very different. In this one, we're not Sorry, in summarized spoken text, we're not writing one sentence, we're writing multiple sentences. Summarized written text, you write one sentence. Then there's retell lecture, which is a speaking task where you listen to a lecture and speak for 40 seconds. So in fact, what you're about to find out in the method, which I'll show you in a second, the method for retell lecture and summarized spoken text are almost identical except for one of them you write and one of them you speak. I'll show you that in a second. You'll be surprised. You can transfer the method for these two here, which is excellent. Let's firstly, firstly, I keep saying firstly, why firstly? Let's next talk about time management. Okay. So in listening, you get a total section of time where you have to manage your own time during that section, which isn't quite right. Same as reading. 
Reading, you get a total section of time. I think it's like 32 to 41 minutes and you have to manage your own time. Then in other words, the, the tasks are not individually timed. You have to manage your own time. Speaking's a little different. So speaking, what happens is this. Summarized spoken text is timed separately to the other seven listening tasks. So for the other seven listening tasks, you have to manage your own time. But for summarized spoken text, the first listening task, you get set time of 10 minutes. And you should use all of that 10 minutes for each summarized spoken text. I hope that makes sense. So if you finish early at say eight minutes with your summarized spoken text and you click next, the time does not carry over to the other sections. So in other words, you're better off to spend the entire 10 minutes or just before it, nine minutes and 59 seconds doing your summarized spoken text, doing your next one for nine minutes and 59 seconds, editing, make sure everything's perfect, then click submit. Then when you go to the, the second listening task, which is multiple choice, multiple answers, then the, in, then the time management begins where you have to manage your own time. I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully you got the point. Scoring, how is this task scored? Well, as I said at the beginning, summarized spoken text contributes to both listening and writing. So if you're getting low writing scores, that could be happening for a number of reasons. One, it could be just a fundamental lack of grammar and vocabulary and structure or written discourse or maybe you're mucking up your summarized spoken text or even your write from dictation has a significant effect. It's a listening task at the end, has a significant effect on your writing score. So summarized spoken text will contribute to uh, listening. Be because it's written, it will also contribute to vocabulary, grammar and written discourse as well. Okay, so it, yeah, it's an important one for both of those communicative skills. Uh, cool, here's how you're specifically scored. So you're scored on content, zero, one or two points. You're scored on length, I'll get to these in a second, grammar, vocabulary and spelling. Content means you mention the main topic and the important keywords or key concepts. Length means that you write between 50 and 70 words. If you write 49 words or 71 words, you will be penalized. Grammar, you need to write grammatically accurate sentences. Vocabulary, you need to use appropriate and precise words. And yes, you can and you should use words directly taken from the lecture. Spelling, you spell all of the words correctly. Be careful. For content, if you write off topic, you will receive zero on all scores if you write about something irrelevant. So you can't just memorize something and then write it on to summarize spoken text. The computer's not that dumb. It knows whether you're writing about the topic or not. And if you write, if you don't write about it, you will just get zero for everything, okay? In other words, you can't cheat, which is a shame, but it's just the way the world works. Be careful for length because you'll lose points if you write under 50 words or over 70 words. You should write between 65 and 70 words. Don't write in capital letters. You will receive zero and use correct punctuation. In fact, don't use like seven exclamation marks because that is wrong. Capital letters, full stops, commas, etc. Method. What are we supposed to do? Well, here's where it gets interesting. As I said, note taking is critical here. So step one, while listening to the lecture, you need to write down the topic of the lecture. What is the lecture about? Is it about psychology? Is it about history? Is it about American history? Is it about this, I don't know, uh, a specific type of history, something like that. So try and get the topic. Also write down on, in your notes, as I just think now, write down as many keywords and key concepts as possible. The way that I do this is basically, as I'm listening, I'm just writing down everything. I'm not writing word for word, that's impossible. This isn't a big write from dictation. I'm just writing down every key word and key concept that I can possibly understand. So just let me point this out. So in, with, with regards to concentration, 
You should be focusing, focusing on listening. You're list that's where your attention should be is on understanding, comprehending the lecture. And 10% is on writing it down. So what we're doing when we're doing this is we're listening, we're listening, we're listening. And the notes are serving as a reminder to us when that lecture finishes. The notes are reinforcing what we're listening to. So after the lecture finishes, you should be able to look at your notes and you'll have your memory and you'll also have this here. And that will mean that you'll be on topic. It means you'll be able to structure up a good summary um, and you'll be able to get the main ideas and the, and the, and the key details. Okay. Keywords. What are keywords? Well, keywords are like this. Imagine the professor's up the front saying blah, 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 blah. What are keywords? Which words that come out of his mouth are worth writing down and which ones should you ignore? Well, there are two types of words, two categories you can think of. And this goes for any language, not just English. There are grammatical words and there are meaningful words. Usually grammatical words are not emphasized and meaningful words are emphasized. So these are the grammatical words like ah, the, he, it, to, of, that, which, over, on. These are underemphasized. They're not important. They're the glue that hold the sentence together. In contrast, you'll have meaningful words like diet, kids, hectic, choice, food, parents, nutritious. Just compare the meaning between these two words, these two categories of words. So articles like ah, the, pronouns like he, it, prepositions like to, of, pronouns again like that, which. These lack meaning. They don't have any meaning. They're just there to put the sentence together grammatically. Words like this, in contrast, diet, kids, hectic, this actually has meaning. This has meaning. Yes, that makes sense. So you can think about it like this. You can think about language like a brick wall, right? Where the bricks are the meaningful words, the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, and the cement or the mortar between the bricks are the grammatical words, like the articles and the prepositions and those little pronouns. They don't mean much, but the bricks are what you want to focus on, okay? So if we look at a text, a transcript of a lecture, you can imagine the person speaking. This is what it says. We can break this down into keywords and so, or in other words, important words and unimportant words. So let's look at this in terms of the nouns, because personally, I, well, maybe I'm right here. I think the nouns are the most critical thing you should listen for. Words like parents, importance, diets, childhood, homes, parents, children, eating habits, half, parents, children, diets, eating, parents, challenges, price, picky eaters, convenience. You can see what this lecture is about just by looking at the nouns. If I were to delete every other word and all you could see were the blue words like parents, diet, childhood, children, etc., you would probably be able to guess what this lecture is about. Verbs are also critical because it's the noun and the verb that make a concept. Okay, so now we've got agree, comes, shaping, eat, believe, say, understand, provide, buying, buying, no, spending, grimace. Grimace is a funny verb. Adjectives are important probably to a lesser degree. Nearly all. Healthy. A third. Confident. Good. Healthy. Nutritious. Not healthy. Common. Healthy. Hectic. Frustrating. Healthy. Ongoing. Healthy. Single. So what are key concepts? Because you don't want to just write down key words. You don't want to just write down words. You want to try and write down concepts. So a concept will be this. Concept might just be a noun and a verb and possibly an adjective. So if we look at this one, this might be a note that you write down. Parents believe nutrition going down. Okay, fine. You could scribble that down very quickly. You've captured a main idea here, a main concept by capturing a key noun and a key verb. 
and possibly another noun as well. And you may just use an arrow in your notes, like a down arrow or an up arrow or what, smiley face, a sad face, whatever it is. It might be a symbol that will help you to remember what that key concept was. So when you go to write your summary, you can look at this and turn that into a beautiful sentence. Step two, after you've written your notes, you fit the topic and the important keywords into a structure, a framework. Last week, we looked at retail lecture. We're going to use, well, in fact, it's an identical structure to retail lecture because that's just how this works. So if you remember correctly from last week, the speaker was discussing topic. He or she mentioned keyword one, he or she talked about keyword two, he or she discussed keyword three, keyword four suggested that keyword five. This is the basic structure. This won't get you a 79. It possibly could get you a 65. But what we need to do is take this framework, this basic structure and improve it, make it more complex, make it more sophisticated to push us up past 65 and into the 79 territory. But this is the structure that you remember for test day. That's all you remember. And the good thing is retail lecture and this one are the same structure. So you're not memorizing, memorizing separate structures. You're memorizing one that's applied to the both tasks. And there's really very little difference between the two in terms of execution, how you do it on test day. Let's look at an example. Just before we do, I just got to make sure everyone's cool and the technology is working all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, so working. Nice. I'm waffling and waffling and waffling. Sometimes I think, uh oh, they're still there. Right, let's look at an example of this structure. So the speaker was discussing media. He mentioned how media has changed a lot. By the way, this is a this is just a different example. It's not related to the lecture that we looked at before. This is a, based on a separate lecture. The speaker was discussing media. He mentioned how media has changed a lot. He talked about the printing press. He discussed two-way communication. He described the use of the telegraph. He suggested that media changed a lot in the 20th century. You can see my notes. They are the bold words like media, how media has changed, the printing press, two-way communication, etc. This would get you, well, not a great score. Content, you'd get one point out of three. Sorry, what was the scoring again? Was it zero, one, and two? I can't remember. Anyway, content, one point. Length, one point, because you only wrote 42 words. It, it's not long enough. Grammar, two points. Vocab, two. Spelling, two. You'd get seven out of 10 for this one. Let's improve it. Example two. The speaker was discussing innovation in media. He mentioned how media has changed enormously. He talked about the impact of the printing press in Europe. He discussed two-way communication, including the telegraph and telephone. He described the invention of radio and television. He suggested that media changed significantly in the 20th century. Content, why did I rate at one point? Anyway, length, 52 words, that's good. It's now up to uh, the correct word length. Remember, you need to write between 50 and 70. Personally, I think that writing closer to 70 would be better. Grammar, vocab, and spelling. Nine out of 10, I think we can improve it. Maybe not through content, but maybe through grammar. Let's have a look at example three. This is the 10 out of 10 one. The speaker was discussing innovation in media. He firstly mentioned how media has changed enormously over a relatively short period of time. He then talked about the impact of the printing press and the effects that it had. In addition, he discussed two-way communication, including the telegraph and telephone. He described the invention of radio and television. Finally, he suggested that media changed significantly in the 20th century. So at the beginning in the instructions, they say, write a summary for a friend. So here's you and you're, you're writing this and you can imagine you've handed this to your friend and your friend is reading the summary and it's a pretty nice summary. It makes better put a smiley face on your friend. It's a pretty nice summary. It's very clear. And you've picked out all of those important key words, the key concepts. You've structured it very well. So if your friend missed the lecture and you wrote that down for your friend, your friend would be pretty happy with this. And this is what makes the PTE happy. This structure here. 
this would be a 10 out of 10, okay? Just a quick note on grammar on that structure. You've got to get your verbs right. And we've used two types of verbs here. The first verb was discussing is a past continuous verb. You can see the was and the ing. The speaker was discussing health science. And then we use past tense verbs, mentioned, talked, discussed, described, suggested. So first verb tense is past continuous and the following verb tenses are past simple. These following ones can go in any order. Let me point this out. You don't have to memorize the order. These ones here, these can go in any order. You can start with talked about, mentioned. You can increase, in fact, you can add highlighted, the speaker highlighted the importance of eating McDonald's hamburgers for breakfast. Um, she, she emphasized. So you can use your own verbs in here as well. You can, um, what's the word? Complexify, that's not really a word. You can make it more complex, make it more complex. Okay, use your natural writing skills to, to build on this framework to build a really nice complex summary that's still accurate. Um, get your prepositions right. Talked about, okay? Talked about is the only time we will use that preposition. You talk about something. You do not discuss about something. You just discuss something. It's a transitive verb. You do not need a preposition. He discussed the importance of diet. Not he discussed about the importance of diet. So it's only the verb talk that takes that preposition. So let's, just before I give you some practice, let's look at the top score checklist. On test day, this is what you want to remember. So the content, you want to note down the topic for your opening sentence. The speaker was discussing health science. The speaker was discussing educational psychology, whatever. You want to note down about six or eight, six to eight important ideas, keywords and key concepts. You want to write between 65 and 70 words, no more. You want to have correct grammar, you want to have precise word choice, you want to have correct spelling, and you want to use all of the 10 minutes to write and edit. Your turn. So just I'll give you just a second to write down this structure on a piece of paper, because I'm about to play the lecture and you want to have this in front of you. While you're writing that down, I've just realized I want to put a timer on this. Just give me a second to find my timers. Uh, hold on, I'm going to put a timer on the next one. Uh, where is it? Here it is. All right, cool. All right, sorry about that. I forgot to do that. Cool. So this is the structure you want to use. I'm going to play the lecture. You better take good notes, then fit it to this structure here. You'll have 10 minutes to do so. I'll have a look at a few at the end. Here we go. Hopefully you can hear this lecture. Three, two, one. Nearly all parents agree with the importance of healthy diets during childhood. But when it comes to their own homes, only a third of parents of children ages four to 18 are confident they are doing a good job shaping their child's eating habits. While a little more than half of parents believe their children eat mostly healthy, only one in six believe their children's diets are very nutritious. Meanwhile, about a fourth of parents say their child's eating is somewhat or not healthy at all. Common challenges get in the way, such as price, picky eaters, and convenience. You see, most parents understand that they should provide healthy food for their children, 
but the reality of work schedules, children's activities and different food preferences can make meal preparation a hectic and frustrating experience. There is a tension between buying foods children like and buying foods that are healthy. It can be an ongoing struggle. Many of us know the feeling of spending time and money on a healthy meal only to have our children grimace at the sight of it and not take a single bite.
Okie dokie, that's actually about 10 minutes because remember that it includes the time of the lecture then plus whatever's left of the 10 minutes. Uh, yes. Do I have an answer? Oh, I do have an answer. Okay, just before I give you, show you my answer, I want you to do something for E2 language. If you're a free user, I want you to go to this website here. If you're feeling generous, if you're feeling a little bit generous and you like what E2 language is doing, you feel like you want to contribute a little bit of, well, not cryptocurrency, paypal.me, unfortunately, this is real money, E2 language. If you go to this website here, paypal.me slash E2 language, and you like what we're doing, you like these free videos that we're putting up on YouTube to help everybody pass their test so you don't have to drive to a language school and you feel like you can contribute a couple of dollars to our cause, please do, it'd be very helpful. I'll put the link in the description below this video. That would be awesome. Also, by the way, if you do need help, like genuinely need some help with your PTE, if you're feeling worried, do go to the website e2language.com, sign up for a free account, and if you need extra help, you can always upgrade from there for our tutorials, full access to our live classes, feedback on your speaking and writing, et cetera. We've got a full platform with an online course. Um, we have tutor uh, tutors all around the world, all sorts of stuff for you there. So a couple of things for you to think about. One is you may want to contribute a little bit of cash to our course, or you may want to actually help yourself and, and do the online course. Let's have a look at my answer now. So my answer said this. The speaker was discussing childhood nutrition. So that was my topic. There's my verb, was discussing. Firstly, she mentioned that parents are not confident that they are providing their children with healthy food. Look at that sentence. It's actually a complex sentence. Firstly, well, I've got the discourse marker at the beginning. Firstly, then I've got the she mentioned because that's my framework. Okay, let me just start to underline these verbs so you can see them. There's my framework. She mentioned, and then I've got a, a coordinating word here. She mentioned that parents, there's a key word, are not confident, there's a key word, that they are providing their children with healthy food. Okay, she then talked about, there's that preposition, how making healthy foods can be burdensome. I believe she said it was I've used a synonym here. I can't remember the exact word that she said. She said that it's a chore. It's a chore. So I've used a synonym there. You can use the word directly from the lecture, but I thought burdensome was an interesting word. Moreover, discourse marker, she discussed how some children are picky and won't eat nutritious food. Finally, she suggested that parents are concerned about what they are feeding their children and whether or not these foods are healthy. This little summary would get me a 10 out of 10. Content is on the money. The length is good at 69 words. The grammar is perfect. The vocabulary is precise. Everything is spelled correctly as far as I know. And I think that's it. That's all you need to do. You should make sure you edit it before you click the next button and submit it. And that my friends is how you get a top score for summarized spoken text. Ta-da, magic. All right, let me answer some of your questions now because I'm sure you have some brewing.